Before you are praying, refill me, O God, mm -hmm. and let your children hear you speak through me. And Lord, bless me, bless your children, bless the one of us, and help us, Lord, to live above sin, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yes, we started our discussion on sin two weeks ago. I would say, we, we, we looked at the life of Adam and Eve, how they sinned against God, how sin came into this world through Adam and Eve, and how Jesus Christ came to save us from that sin. And as we thought of that, we went further last week to say that now people say, well, as a Christian, yeah, there's nothing you can do. We cannot avoid uh, committing sin. And so we say, why? Why, why are you saying that? I say, well, the grace of God is sufficient for us. And then we, we know, we, we will discuss that. And Paul said, shall we now continue to commit sin because we know the grace of God is going to abound? Shall we now continue in sin and say the grace of God will abound? We say, no. God forbid, how can we, who were once in darkness, who are once doing the things of the devil, how can we still live again? Paul made us to understand in, the, in Romans chapter 6, verse 14, he said, sin will not have dominion over us. Sin is not supposed to control us. We are supposed to do what? To control sin. When sin comes to us, we are supposed to tell sin, Mr. Sin, or Mrs. Sin, or Master Sin, or whoever you are. You can't tell me what to do. I tell you what to do. And do you know what I want you to do? Get lost and go into the sea in the name of Jesus Christ. That what? You do what? Sin is not supposed to control you and say, you, you, this girl, you, that boy, do this. I want to do this, that, go, go and steal. No, you can't, you can't. You have dominion. You have dominion over what? Over sin. Over sin. When sin comes, you know, we know that sin comes through the devil. The devil tempts you, you know, through temptation. And you will know what the book of Proverbs says. Book of Proverbs chapter 1, he said, My son, if sin has entice thee, do what? Consent thou not. Do not consent. Do not agree. Do not agree. If they entice you, say, "Come, let's 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 let come. Let us go and lay wait for blood." Don't consent to that. If you consent, that means sin is dominating you. But if you don't consent, it means you are what? You are dominating sin. You are controlling sin. You are saying, "No, I cannot consent. I cannot do what? I cannot consent." You sin. Pack your load and do what? Go in the name of Jesus. And sin is bound to do what? To obey you. Now today we want to talk about the consequences of sin. We are saying about what sin is. We are saying about the grace of God, taking the grace of God for granted. As a, as, 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 as a ticket to commit sin, the grace of God is sufficient. Now we want to see now. We are still talking about all this, all this topic are still rolling, moving around the, the topic called sin. And so today we want to see, is there a consequence if we sin? Certainly, I know I spoke, I spoke, I spoke a little about it uh, uh, last week. I know I said something that, that the Jesus Christ would say, many will come that day and say, Lord, we did this in your name, with that, you know. He will say, I don't know you. That's one of the consequences of sin. But today I want to dwell more on it, the consequences of sin. There are many consequences. Now, the consequence for a believer, now listen to me, the consequence of sin for a Christian might be slightly different from the consequence of sin to an unbeliever. You know what I'm trying to say. Now you understand what I'm trying to say very, very soon. Now we all know the popular verse of Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Where Paul was addressing this. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 6, verse 23. It's a popular verse, we all know it. Romans chapter 6. Verse 23. We know we read Romans chapter 6 uh, last week and we ended in verse 14. But we don't want to see the end of it. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages 
of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So, the consequence of sin, the first consequence of sin is what? Death. Now, I want you to understand something. I said before I started, I said the consequence of sin for a believer is different from that for or what? Of, of, of an unbeliever. If you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, the final result of you sinning against God is because you have not accepted Jesus. So if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, you're not a pastor savior, automatically you are what? You are a sinner. You are wearing that badge of a sinner. You are being dominated by sin. Sin is having dominion over you because there is no Christ. And unfortunately for you, the end is what? Is death. Death where? In the lake of fire. You will die now physically and you also find yourself where? In the lake of fire. Now, why I said is different. That, that is not for somebody who, who have not Jesus Christ. What of those that have Jesus Christ? What of those of you that have Jesus Christ? Yes, the final consequence of sin for those who even have Jesus Christ is also death. But they have options. Are you listening to me? They have, they have what? They have options. God will give you many opportunities. As I said, people say God gives you a second chance. But I say God gives you more than, two, more than two chances. God can decide to give you what? Even ten chances. God will give you the tenth chance. God can decide to give you the twentieth chance. Why? Because you profess that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. And God is, is, is making sure that you, you do not get entangled with those who are not Christians. And that's where the grace of God comes in. But somebody who takes the grace of God for granted continually, 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 you take the grace, oh yeah, the grace of God is there, and you continue to commit the sin, God will come to give you long rope, come to give you long rope, because it is not the will of God that any should perish, but that what? That all should come to repentance. God does not want anyone to perish. That is why he said, again, Paul was trying to say in that Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the second part, he said, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God is not willing for anybody to perish. So God gives you opportunity and opportunity and opportunity. I'm talking to you now as a, as a child of God. Those of you that call yourself Christians, you go to church. God gives you the opportunity to be saved. To change your ways. God gives you the opportunity not to continue in that sin you are doing. God gives you the opportunity to reject that sin. To say no to such sin that want to get you. That want to drag you into their what? Into their camp. God is trying to make you to see what? No, you did not what? Accept. I mean, you did not continue in such a sin. That is why sometimes the Bible says the person God loves, he did what? He chastises. When you fall into sin as a Christian, God shall ties you. He doesn't condemn you immediately. He doesn't condemn you immediately. As a child of God, when you fall into sin, when God sees that you fall into sin, He does not condemn you immediately. Because Paul said in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after what? After the Spirit. You are not condemned. But Jesus Christ says something again. For those who refuse to believe in Him, He said what? They are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of, of God. In the book of John, chapter, I'm coming back, I'm just going forth, uh, uh, back and forth, back and forth, but I'm coming back, I'm going to dwell in all these things I'm, I've, I've been trying to uh, uh, say to you. You see, in, in John chapter 3, in John chapter 3, I want you to understand. In John chapter 3, I want to read from verse 18 now. From verse 18, John chapter 3, turn your Bibles to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. I'm reading here from verse 18. And I'm going to I'm going to um, I'm going to dwell. I mean, I'm going to read 18 to 20. Are you there? John chapter 3. I'm reading verses 18 to 20. He said, He that believeth on him is not condemned. 
You see, you that have given your life to Jesus Christ, you are not, you are not condemned. That's what Paul is trying to say. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are what? In Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Who are not doing the things of the flesh. Who are not committing sin, but are willing to do what the spirit says. And the spirit will tell you not to do what? Con I mean commit sin. So you are not condemned. Now listen to me. You are not condemned because you believe in Jesus. Now listen to me. Believers in Christ. I'm talking to you now. You are not condemned. Because you believe in Jesus. Now listen to me. Let's go on. He said, but he that believeth not is condemned already. You see what I said about you that have no Jesus Christ? You are what? You are condemned already. 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 You are a condemned person. If you are a sinner, you don't have Jesus Christ, you are condemned. That means your destination is death. And the death is what? The ways of sin is death. Your destination is where? The lake of fire. No option for you. The only way you can move from that condemnation already is to do what? To believe in who? In Jesus Christ. To accept Jesus as what? Your Lord and Savior. You see, the Bible now went further to say, is, it said, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. 19 says, and this is the condemnation, really. Trying to describe the, the condemnation of those without Jesus Christ. That light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hated the light. Verse 20. Now that coming to the light, least his deed should be what? Reproved. This is why they are condemned. Because I brought them light and they rejected it. Because men love to do what? The things of what? Darkness. So that's why you are condemned. Ready. That's why you are what? Condemned already. But as a child of God, you are no condemned. Yeah, because the grace of God is sufficient for you. But the consequences of sin is this. When you take that grace of God for granted, when the Lord chastises you, now look at it, look, 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 when Adam and Eve, they sin against God, when Adam and Eve sin against God, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, God still loved them. God did not outrightly destroy them. Though God told them, let us turn about to Genesis. God told them the consequence of what they have, what will happen to them at the beginning. He said, you may eat of every fruit of the garden, but the fruit in the midst of the garden that shall not touch. But the day they touch it, you will do what? You will surely die. He told them the consequence of what? Disobedience. Disobeying him. The consequence of sin. If they sin against him, because if you disobey God, it means you have sinned against God. It means you have done what? You have sinned against God. Now look at what happened. I'm going to read here Genesis. Let's look at Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Don't forget, Adam and Eve were the first man and the first woman that God created. Listen to me. Listen to me. They have God in their system. They recognize God, but they sin. Now, the children of God, God did not spare them. God punished them. But God did not condemn them. Now, listen to me. God punished them, but God did not what? Condemn them. In Genesis chapter 3, look at what happened. Another called his wife, verse 20. I'm reading from verse 20 to 24. Another called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. And the Lord God said, Behold, verse 22, 
The man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now this, he put forth his hand and take of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to give the way of the tree of life. Now they realized they were naked, and they so leave to cover them. For God looked at them. God did not condemn them. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in what? In Christ Jesus. God did not condemn them. God saw that they felt sorry, but they must face what? The consequence of what they have done. And that consequence is death. That death is a physical death. They felt of what died spiritually, and now they are going to die physically. Now listen to me. Listen to me very well. God drove them out of the garden. God prevented them from getting into the way of the tree of life. Because God does not want them to live forever in suffering. Because prior to that, God has already what? Released punishment upon them. Tell the man, you will, you will do what? You will suffer in childbirth. Tell the man, you are going to sweat. So instead of to live like that forever, God decided to do what? To shorten their lifespan. That's the consequence. But they were saved on the long run. Why? Because they did not continue in what? In sin. Now listen to me. They did not what? Continue in sin. They corrected their ways. They made their way. No, they have faced the first consequence. That's the way God deals with what? With his children. But a time will come. A time will what? Will come. For those in the house of God. Who the Lord has given you the second chance. God gave Adam and Eve the second chance. And Adam and Eve did not misuse the second chance God gave to them. The unique opportunity that God gave to them, they did not misuse it. God gave them second chance. God gave them third chance. But God gave them the second chance, they did not misuse the second chance. They used it wisely. And then because of that, God did not cast them away forever. I'm going somewhere, we're coming. Going to the conclusion, let, 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 I'm, I'm almost get, getting to the conclusion of the message today. For the ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal. I'm talking about to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 to 11. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. If now as a child of God you are passing through one difficult situation or the other, and you say you are praying to God, yes, God, I know I've committed that sin, but I'm very sorry to what I've done. And it seems as if nothing has changed. The difficult situation, the suffering continues. Just because you made one mistake. You did not do it purposely. You didn't take the grace of God for granted. Now I want to tell you what is happening to you now. I want to tell you what you are experiencing as a child of God. And we are going somewhere. Now listen, listen, listen. <laughs> and after this, I'm going to I'm going to my conclusion uh, message. I mean, uh, passage. And yeah, I'm not forgetting... And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. So the Lord rebukes Adam and Eve, chastening them. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. God loves them. That's why God decided to do what? Took the leave away and gave them what? Clothed them with what? Animal skin. God clothed them with what? Animal skin. Similar to the clothes you are putting on. Similar to the clothes you are putting on. There are some clothes that are made of animal skin. There are some clothes that are made from plant, from a, a, a plant that brings wool. So, yeah. So, God clothed them very well. He loves them. He said, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Verse 7. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement and listening, Wherefore all are partakers, then are ye, are ye what? Bastard and not sons. If the Lord does not chasten you, then you are not a child of God. You are what? You are an unbeliever. You are somebody who has decided to do what? To go away from God. So God must chastise you. It's part of the word, the Christian race. Furthermore, we have had fathers of the flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much more rather be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? 
for they very for a few days, testing us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Are you listening to that? It is for your good that you are passing through what you are passing now. You have sinned against God. Now, David sinned against God. And he faced the consequence. What was the consequence? God did not allow that beloved son, that the son that he loved so much, God did not allow that child to live. It's painful. God said, no, this, this child cannot come to a home of adultery. At a time like this, that adultery was raging in the old, in the old house of, 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 of David. And God said, no, 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 he's not going to do what? He's not going to, no, no. This child cannot be brought up in this home. And God decided to do what? To take. God gave them the child. God gave them the child. But they forced the child out of the hand of God wrongly. And God said, no, no, that child you forced out of my hand wrongly. I'm taking him back. And God said, David, your house will be upside down because of what you have done. David faced the consequence now. A king running away from the throne. A king running when nobody is pursuing him. Those are the consequences. But was David saved at last? Yes, he was saved at last. Because he did not continue in sin. Shall we continue in sin and say the grace of God to abound? God forbid, Paul said. Now verse 10 says, Now no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, after he treated the peaceful fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. God wants you to be what? Holy. God wants his children to live a holy life. God wants to make every one of us to live what? A holy life. The consequence of sin is terrible. It's death in the lake of fire. But what? Let us see what Peter concludes. Let's conclude the message with the book of 1 Peter. To ever would meet the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Chapter 4. Quickly, quickly, quickly. You want to read now? Your time is fast spent. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. If you are there, say Amen. They are not there yet. 1 <laughs> Peter chapter 4. Alright. We're going to read verse 16 to 19. And listing carefully. <laughs> Listen carefully. I repeat again, for those who don't have Jesus Christ, the Bible says you are condemned already. So all you need to do is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That is the end for those who don't have Jesus Christ. For those who say they have given their life to Christ who are Christian, Born again, tongue speaking, anointed. They can lay hands on the sick, the sick will recover. They can pray for the blind, as I'm talking to you now, the blind's eye will open. They can talk to a cancer, anyone that is having cancer right now, you cancer, go in the name of Jesus Christ, it will go. You are the ones I'm talking to now, believers in Christ. If you sing, God will chastise you. God is not going to condemn you immediately. But wait, we are going somewhere. Now, what, where are we going? See the conclusion of last week, but I'm bringing another one to go because just Christ said, because some of us are deceiving ourselves because we have the anointing, we have the power, God has given it to us, we are using it, we preach the gospel, and so we take God for granted by doing some secret things, by bringing our own actions, our own ideas into the work of the ministry, into the Christian life, to deceive people, to put them in darkness. And that's why Jesus Christ said, you will call unto me, Lord, Lord. I will say, I never knew you. Because you walk, you walk at iniquity. You are not doing the will of my Father who is in heaven. And Peter came in a different way. And he what Peter said, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 4. Let me read from verse 16 to 19. He said, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. But let him glorify God on his behalf. That is, he's talking now to Christians, believers who are being persecuted. But that's not where I'm going. Look at verse, verse, verse 17. It says, For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Of course, their end is what? 
is death. The ways of sin is death. And look at what Peter said again. He said, and if the righteous castly be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? If the what? The righteous scarcely be saved. In other words, as a child of God, if you are not careful, you will not be saved on the last day. Because on the last day, Jesus Christ is going to say to you, get behind me. I never knew you. You that walked in iniquity. And why will he say that? Is you say that because you took the grace of God for granted. You took the chastening of the Lord for granted. You despise the correction of God. You despise every warning that God gives you. God will try to warn you as he's warning you now to stop sin, to stop committing sin, don't go in sin, and you refuse to do it. The Bible says you will scarcely be saved. Jesus will reject you and you will join those whose end is death in the lake of fire. The consequences of sin is deadly. Don't allow the devil to deceive you. That's a child of God. As far as you have become a Christian, you are saved. Once saved, saved forever. Don't let the devil deceive you. Once saved, saved forever. Don't let the devil deceive you with that one. No. I'm saved. So you can do anything. I can see. As I had a preacher talking one of these days. About one saved, saved forever. He said, look, let me explain to you. That's what the preacher was saying. He said, when, you, when the Bible says one saved, one, I don't know where he quoted from. When the Bible says one saved, saved forever, it means that now I'm saved. I've accepted Jesus Christ. I can decide to go and kill anybody on my side. I can decide to go and steal. God will forgive me because I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. God will not count what I've done because I'm what I'm saved. I believe in Jesus Christ. Ah, dangerous teaching. If you like listening to preachers like that, you will find yourself like Jesus Christ will say, and you and that preacher, I never knew you. You that walk in iniquity. Ah, you said Jesus. Ah, I'm saved now. You should tithe me. You should tithe me. You're forgiving me now. So why would you condemn me? He said, I never knew you because you're not doing the will of my Father who is in. Heaven. Brethren, let's not deceive ourselves. Let no man deceive you. Yes, God loves you. But God is warning you now. Except you change. If you take it upon yourself, mm, nothing will happen. This, this father just preaching nonsense. Nothing will happen. I've given my life to Christ. I can do what I want to do. God will forgive me. God will forgive me. I can do anything. Is it not God? He's a merciful God. He knows I'm a sinner. Ah! The Bible says it's a fearful thing into the hands of the living God. Let us pray. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, please bow your heads and pray. Call Jesus into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I call upon you today. I've had your word. Your word say I'm condemned already because I don't have you. But today, I say I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins. I accept you today as my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my heart and dwell. And teach me to walk in the righteous path. Please write my name in the book of life. I open my heart to be controlled by your spirit. In the name of Jesus. And if you are in the church, you are still struggling with sin, rising and falling, rising and falling. The day you fall, maybe that will be the day Jesus Christ will come and you will miss the rapture. So you want to pray for the grace to be a stable Christian? A Christian that is doing things that are pleasing unto God. You want to rededicate your life to Christ? Rededicate your life right now. Say, Christ, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I am saved, but Lord, I still find myself in one sin or the other. But today, I want to stop those habits, those evil habits. I want to stop taking your grace for granted. Please, Lord Jesus Christ, restore me back to my faith again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray that prayer for yourself. Lord Jesus, restore me back to my faith again. And help me not to be deceived and think that once I'm saved, I'm saved forever. I can do what I like. But I've just realized I cannot do what I like. Because you're only correcting me in order to get me to heaven. But if I refuse, 
I won't make it. Lord, help me to yield to your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your children who have had your word. Seal your word in the heart of everyone today and help them, O oh Lord. Especially your children that will not be deceived by the word once saved, saved forever. No. Yes, once saved, saved forever in one part is, oh, is true, but in the other part, anyone that is deranged, anyone that is taking your grace for granted, anyone that is taking your chastisement for granted, anyone that feels is not used to you and so he can manipulate you. Lord, those people will be surprised that one saved is not saved forever. One saved can go to hell. Help every one of us to understand your word and to put our ways right before you. Thank you for those who have surrendered unto you and we will be doing that very soon. Bless every one of us. We'll pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.